looks like it's going to have to be modified straight out of the packet, so it's not unusual about that. So I'm just out the back at the wrecked car. I took the engine out of this to put in the carry truck and then cut the front off it to make um, it easier to scrap later on. Um, lots of good parts left on this. So I advertised and someone said that they wanted some of these, uh, well actually all of the lower arms on the passenger side at the rear. So I just jacked it up with the engine crane. Engine crane? Yeah, it's an engine crane. We'll call it that. So I'm just going to pull the wheel off, pull this side um, stuff out, and then, uh, yeah, that'll be it for today. This should be all the tools I need. An extension, uh, rattle gun, set of uh, sockets to go with that. What have I got here? A 12 mil, 14 mil, 17, and a 19 mil spanner. Ratchet and some sockets to go with that ratchet. So that should be all I need. Not complicated. All right, so we want the hub, this bar, this bar, this bar, um, and that's it. Let's get this wheel off, shall we? Oh, wow, okay. That's not even done up. Never going to drive over again. Bearing seems to be of acceptable quality. Ooh. Forgot about these. This is one of the reasons I didn't try and save this chassis, is because you can see that it's been it's been welded in here, and they didn't do a very good job. It's uh, very average. Not even like why would you even try and save this when it's at this point? This is one of the wow. It's the, the biggest weak point for cappuccinos is they just rust. Um, when Suzuki made them, they cut every corner in regards to rust protection and things like that. So this is what you end up with. If you didn't get a good one, then um, you got a really bad one. All right, to get these screws out, they're just um, locator screws for the disc. Um, I've tried using normal screwdriver before. I'm not even going to bother with that today. Um, I've got one of these. This is an impact. You basically hit this end with a hammer and it makes it uh, spin and puts a shock through the bolt or screw in this case to help it let go. It might just... Oh, it's not even tight. Look at that. I'm not even going to get to use it. So, but yeah, you just... Um, Helps them let go. But how's that? Didn't even need it. Oh well. It's always time for the lubricant. I'm nearly out of this WD4556 stuff, so I might start using cutting oil. LOL. Quite a lot of rust in there. What I'm going to do here is thread these in. These are going to go in and push against the hub and then push this back. Oh, I need a 12. A little bit of a hurry today because I've got I've just started a new job.
bang. Done. Easiest way to get it off. Well, I got a call from Dustin Yee asking for help to get his turbo out. Um, so I had to turn off filming for this. I've got the hub out. Um, but I'm just stuck on this. So I've had a lot of, a lot of trouble trying to get this bolt out because it's rusted itself onto the bush. But uh, you're just hitting it with a hammer multiple times. Has uh, got it to move. It's just a matter of hitting the crap out of it until it eventually comes all the way out. Did I get it? There it is. This bolt can suck my dick. This bastard. Look how rusty it is. There she is, no problem. My 60 hose clamps arrived, and I have beer. All right, here's the original clamp. Mikalor, made in Spain. Bought these from eBay. They weren't that expensive, but because I bought so many of them, it cost me a bit of money. These are Trident brand, um, brand name hose clamp. Uh, recommended to me by an Australian guy, a friend of mine, and said that they'd be much better. When I was tightening them up, I noticed the output end started to twist, so kind of lost faith in them. Ordered these from eBay, much thicker than uh, the other ones. These are no name brand, which kind of worries me, but oh well. 57 to 65 All right, so someone said that these would suck um, And that the Trident ones or the Trident type ones would be better actually a Jubilee Would be better Jubilee brand which were actually cheaper than these um, But yeah, and the reason he said was this distance made it makes a big difference. Well, this is Let's go in order of appearance. This is the Mikalor. This is the Trident. It's almost double. And this is my no name brand. So it's about three times as big as the Mikalor. So if what uh, Old Mate says is true, and this distance is the important thing, these ones are going to be the best. Provided that these spot welds don't break, and what else could snap on this? Uh, I guess the spot welds. If the spot welds hold, then I should be able to crank these really, really tightly. Anyway, now I have to go through and pull out all of the intercooler hosing in the carry truck, and fit these, then put it all back again. Yeah, I don't think I have enough beer for this.
All right, here we have those clamps that I got from eBay. Um, they're T-bolt clamps, and as you can see, they're from 44 to 51 millimeters. So they'll be perfect, right? A 47 millimeter minimum. What the f <laughs> And this, this is what it's all about for me. You build a car, and you drive it, and you hang out with your friends who also have the same passion that you do. And you've done it because it's a passion. And you meet and you have the greatest time of your life every time you meet. That's it for this episode of Garage K. Make sure you come back for the next one. I guarantee it's going to blow your mind. There just hasn't been another one like this. And there probably never will be. So I'll see you then. Stay cool. See you later.